Sleeping is a very important part of the child's activity during the stage of infancy. The purpose for the Dr. Daycare Sleep and Napping Guidelines is to teach children routines and meet each child's individual developmental needs. Sleep provides opportunities for brain development, growth, and influences lifelong sleeping habits. Children are supervised at all times while sleeping, just as they're supervised at all times of the day. Dr. Daycare follows safe sleep practices to guide our teachers in meeting the needs of our infants. This means that babies are always placed on their backs when placed in the crib. Remember the phrase, back to sleep. No items are allowed in the cribs. This includes blankets, bumpers, or stuffed animals. If the child rolls over, usually around four to seven months, it's okay to leave the baby on their stomach or side. Please do not roll the child over. Rolling over is a developmental milestone in their life. Cribs will not be rocked or shaken for the safety of the children and teachers. If you ever have a question regarding a child's sleeping habits, please ask your administrator to help you develop a plan with the parents. The home office staff are also always available as a resource to you. See our Sleeping Infants Policy for guidelines on infant sleeping schedules. It's important to keep in mind most babies rest at the times outlined in the policy and for about one to two hours each time they rest. These are general guidelines for child development and may fluctuate with each child's personality. Many components are taken into consideration for resting. The age of the baby, what time the child woke up in the morning prior to coming to doctor daycare, how long an infant typically naps at home, and the parents' feedback about their child's sleeping habits. Typically, babies who do not fall asleep shortly after being placed in their crib, they will be nurtured by a teacher by gently touching the child's hair or head, gentle reassuring pats on the feet, arms, or shoulders, and using a reassuring calm voice. Reposition a pacifier in the baby's mouth, allowing the child to soothe him or herself to sleep. If the child is still not ready for sleep, you can take the child out of the crib and engage the child with activities we reviewed earlier, such as tummy time, swing, rocking and reading, or playing and exploring the classroom. The baby will be placed back in their crib during the next scheduled rest time. If the child falls asleep or seems visibly tired while engaged in activities, the baby will then be placed back in their crib. You may notice a baby is visibly tired if you see him or her rubbing their eyes, yawning, or crying. As you become more familiar with the babies in your classroom and their unique personalities, you'll begin to notice these cues more easily. Children are never allowed to sleep in any other place except a crib. This means children are not allowed to sleep in a swing, car seat, high chair, the floor, or in a teacher's arms. If a parent brings their child to doctor daycare in a car seat, the baby is removed from the car seat before the parent leaves the classroom. It's important that children do not remain in their car seats, even if they're sleeping. Any time a child falls asleep anywhere other than the crib, they will immediately be placed in their crib. We cannot stress enough the importance of sleeping only in a crib. While teachers are encouraged to hold, rock, nurture, and educate babies throughout the entire day, babies are not rocked for the purpose to assist them in falling asleep. If an infant falls asleep while being rocked or held during part of the day's activities, then the baby will be immediately placed in their crib on their back. All cribs must have a firm crib mattress and tight fitting sheet. No additional items can be placed in the crib. This includes blankets, bottles, bibs, or toys. Parents may bring in a sleep sack or pacifier for their child's rest times with parental permission on the rest time item form. Pacifiers should never have clips or be attached to the child in any way. Pacifiers are only used when the child is in the crib sleeping. Less use of a pacifier during daytime will assist children in developing verbal skills. When the child awakes from his or her nap, it's important that the child does not associate crying with being immediately taken out of his or her crib. Some suggestions are to engage the child by smiling, singing a soft song, or gently clapping hands. 
As soon as the child smiles and stops crying, pick up the child and positively praise the child's smile. In time, a child will wake up smiling and not crying. At approximately 15 to 17 months old, the infant lead teacher will speak with the infant's parents about transitioning the child from a crib to a cot to help prepare for the move to the toddler classroom. All naps in the infant room are recorded on the infant daily log and in tadpoles. This helps with parent communication and noting patterns of child development. 